Welcome to Jack's Conversations. It's my great pleasure today to have Professor Jacqueline Barton of the California Institute of Technology, um, as in Jack's Conversations with Professor Barton. Uh, she's the John G. Kirkwood and Arthur A. Noyes Professor of Chemistry. Uh, she has served as the head of division at the California Institute of Technology, Division of Chemistry and Chemical Engineering, uh, served on a number of boards, a highly accomplished a scientist with numerous awards, not the least of which is the National Medal um, of Science. I don't want to take uh, time because this can go on for quite a bit, um, listing your, your wonderful accomplishments and achievements. Uh, I want to give more time for you to discuss uh, some questions that I have um, concerning chemistry, science, um, and of course, uh, the Journal of the American Chemical Society, where you have recently been appointed as a member of the Editorial Advisory Board. So welcome, Jackie. What was your experience as a young faculty and coming up through the ranks? I didn't really have a traditional kind of start. Probably no one has a really traditional start. Um, but um, for me, uh, when I started out, um, and it was time to decide what I was going to do, um, I decided I really didn't want to be a high-powered professor at a high-powered place. I went and did a postdoc at Bell Labs. Now, at the time, um, Bell Labs clearly is part of industry, but it, it, um, uh, it wasn't the typical kind of industry. It was a hardcore research operation. Uh, but for me, that was dabbling in industry. But it was, was there that I realized, well, um, maybe I didn't want to do industry. I really did like being in a university center. And so I took uh, a position at, at Hunter College uh, in New York. Um, it's, uh, on, it's in Manhattan on Park Avenue. And I'm a very much a New Yorker, even though I've lived in California now for over 30 years, I'm still very much a New Yorker. So it was perfect from that standpoint. Um, and um, I could do a little bit of research. I could do some teaching. And, um, and it fit me. I did write my first independent JAX paper um, at Hunter, um, and I got my first NIH grant at Hunter. Uh, but after just about a year and a half or so, um, I moved to Columbia, where I'd been uh, a graduate student. And so that, that was the beginning. That's how I really got going. And, and I'm telling you the story because different, different people have different ways of figuring out what they want. Um, and, and young people shouldn't feel, I have to do X, Y, and Z and in this order, and then I know uh, what I want and what I want to be. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think the students tend to put themselves under a lot of stress thinking that there's a formula, there's a pathway they have to follow. And you're absolutely right. Everyone has their own unique um, path that we sort of chart out. Exactly, and you really don't know along the line how it's going to go. Um, but, but I think what's important is, is to listen to your gut and, and do what you're passionate about, and, and, and then it will all work out well. What's your magic formula? How do you keep that enthusiasm over a lifetime? Um, you know, I don't know. I just, it's, I, I love chemistry, and I love talking about the research that, that we do, and, you know, and, and it gets you excited. I wonder if you could share with us what you think are your greatest accomplishments as a scientist, as a teacher, as a mentor, all of the above? You know, the, the, without question, it's, it's your students. It's my students. Um, that's more important than the, than all the papers. Um, and then, and, and then the students have students. <laughs> and, um, I think that's, that's, that's really what this is about. When you start out, we were talking about being an assistant professor. When you start out as an assistant professor, um, you know, I think you do think it's about the publications and, and, and all that. Um, but then uh, when you watch your student um, defend their, their thesis and give their first talk about the research, um, there's no kick like that. I mean, that's the yeah. biggest... It, it feels better than everything because you've you've seen you've watched this young person uh, grow up and become a scientist and in, a fabulous independent scientist. And so I think that participating in that process of guiding our students uh, to become independent scientists is 
It's got to be the most important thing that we all do. And it certainly gives me the greatest pride. So who were your mentors? Um, who were the people that were critical uh, to getting you in that path uh, and guiding you through the ups and downs of um, an academic career? Steve Lippert, you know, he was a very important mentor to me. And then it became interesting because when I did, when I went back to Columbia, I took over his labs, my lab where I'd been a graduate student. Um, and he moved to MIT. So um, he was clearly uh, somebody that, that, that made a big difference to me. Also, all of my colleagues at, at, at these places. And, and uh, these are the people that, that were really my heroes. Uh, Ron Breslow, uh, Gilbert Stork uh, at Columbia. And, um, you know, and then when I moved to Caltech, um, Jack Roberts. I mean, I, I, I had the extraordinarily wonderful opportunity to interact with these real giants uh, in chemistry, and and they taught me a lot about um, not just science uh, or how to do science, but about giving back to your institution, and 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 giving back to the field of chemistry and the importance of that. And we are very much a community. So something else you, you've done very successfully is uh, served on uh, several boards of multinational corporations. What's that like? Well, um, I have been on the Dow Chemical Board, uh, the Dow Board, uh, for uh, over 20, well over 20 years. Um, and um, and I, I will be stepping down from, from that board in the next uh, couple of months. Um, and I also serve on the, the Gilead uh, Board. Um, and that's okay. that's more recent. So uh, the Dow Board, I've I, you know I've been privileged um, to be associated uh, with this extraordinary chemical company, um, and have watched it uh, change and and develop uh, over time. Um, I've I've been the only chemist on the board, but I like to feel um, that. That I made a contribution. I, I think I have, um, in in several respects, and 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 it's interesting to talk about this, you know, with chemists. Um, first of all, the importance of research, and and in terms of of the business, it's important um, that the company does good research um, so that their margins are better. So that's one side of it. But the other thing is to to give a sense to the rest of the people around the board about what the challenges are, what the issues are from a chemistry standpoint. Um, you know, what do we mean by biodegradable? Um, you want it to degrade, but you don't, you only want it to degrade when you want it to degrade, not when you don't, uh, for example. It's, it's sort of bringing together the chemistry side of things to, to be able to explain to your colleagues what the issues are in some respects, um, I sort of feel that that the chemistry community has to more generally take on this question sure. of explaining to non-chemists what the issues are, what the challenges are, and how together we can go about uh, addressing them. And and we all have to do that. You know, we have to speak in a language that 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 our colleagues, scientific or not, can understand. Um, and and we have to take the time. Uh, to do that. So um, you've also served as division head uh, for the Department of Chemistry and Chemical and Engineering. That must have similar challenges sometimes, uh, even if you're dealing with mostly scientists, like-minded scientists of sorts. You know, being being division head uh, at Caltech uh, for 10 years, uh, you know, was definitely an honor and a, and a privilege um, and a lot of hard work. <laughs> Sometimes people say, "Oh, you know, you're chair of the of the division. You, you know, you're you're in charge. You're the boss. You're not the boss. You're working for the other forty people in the division. Make no mistake about it. From from that standpoint, for me, the the big thing um, in my mind, as I told you, is the students. And so, my priority was to raise funds to support and endow um, graduate students um, in, in the division. Um, and, and in that regard, 
speaking in the same language. So again, it's a matter of taking the time to explain uh, to colleagues that come from a different perspective um, what's important, how things work. Um, and that end up, ended up uh, making it so that, that we were able to, uh, to raise funds to support the graduate students in chemistry at Caltech. You have been also very successful in um, training and mentoring the next generation of scientists. And it's, at some level, they trace back to your mentorship and your skills in uh, nurturing them and creating an environment of curiosity, um, high standards, and a love of science. So, so what, was the, what was the secret to your success? I do think that one of my talents, if you will, um, is, is I'm great at delegating <laughs> I, I, I'm, and, and letting people do their thing and empowering people and trusting that they're, they're going to do things well. So although I'm constantly checking, um, I, I, I do, I do like to empower people and, and that way you get the best out of them. That's a special talent, recognizing well, the strengths of individuals and then what you can possibly delegate to them um, so that you get the benefits of many people doing their best uh, in a common goal. Absolutely. And, and then, and when you have high expectations for somebody, they will meet them and exceed them. Um, and, and so it's important to always have high expectations and then let them, let them do it. Let, you know, have the trust in them that they can do it, and they do. Um, and then I think the other thing is um, I do it because it's fun, um, because I love doing it, you know? And, and I think my students see that it's fun. Speaking of the young, uh, is there anything you would advise a young up-and-coming scientist to avoid, pitfalls to avoid? Um, to, you know, follow the money. Um, that's not the way to, to do things. It, do what you love. Do it because you think you can make it a contribution in, in some area, not because there's more money being given out um, to support research in that area, I think. Um, I think you've just got to do um, what gets you excited, what, where you think you can, you can really make a difference. Let me ask a different kind of question. So given that you've ha you have this talent for communication, um, with a variety of different individuals. Um, why do you think the general public uh, has such a difficulty in appreciating chemistry? And, and I guess, what can we do better as scientists in terms of communicating the excitement of chemistry to the general public? I think it's, it's what we've been talking about already. It's, it's taking the time to talk the same language um, for, for people not to think that there's something, you know, superbly complicated about, about chemistry. It's just the, the molecular world. We have to take the time to get them to understand and really to, to talk to them about what it is we do. So I noted at the beginning that you're the recipient of the National Medal of uh, Science, which is a high honor uh, given by the government of the United States. I got to ask, what was that like? And, and I got to ask, what was it like meeting Obama? Um, so he's very tall. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for people that don't know, I'm very short. So, uh, but he was uh, incredibly uh, gracious. And, you know, of course, it's, it's an incredible honor. I will mention um, my husband, Peter Durbin, because uh, Peter had received the National Medal of Science a few years before uh, I did. Uh, we think that we are the only couple who have both uh, received the National Medal. Um, but that's, that, so that's extraordinary. I think for both of us, uh, the fact that um, our parents hadn't, hadn't seen it, um, you know, was a shame. Uh, but, but what was special was uh, our kids were with us and, and, oh, um, okay. and that made it extraordinary. Um, I'd like to pick your brain next about this, your uh, newly minted uh, member of the editorial board. Um, in your opinion, what, what has Jax done well and, and how do we orient ourselves uh, to the future so that we continue to do that well? What Jax does well, 
um, in my view. It's about really outstanding papers. And importantly, really outstanding papers across chemistry. It has it all. And, and, and that's key. And that's special. Um, and not only does it have it all and well represented, broadly represented, um, you know, I think, if it's in Jack's, it's excellent. And um, just broadly making sure that's the case um, is the most important thing uh, to do, uh, to keep Jack's the flagship for, for our field. Um, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule and uh, sharing your thoughts. Thank you for your time. Always wonderful to talk to you.